Welcome to another episode of Mic Out. Um, and as you see, I'm uh, sitting here with my laptop again, reading from a script. Uh, I tried to do this video yesterday in the rain, and it was, uh, yeah, I didn't really uh, get to say much. Uh, so the result was very bad. So I wrote a script instead uh, to get my point through better, I think. I'm becoming too much of a couch potato these days. Uh, so hiking is a perfect way to uh, reverse some of the damage of having an office job and spending too much time, uh, too much free time indoors sitting still. So in this episode I will be combining three of my hobbies, off-trail hiking, land navigation, you know mapping compass, not orienteering per se because uh, I'm not that fit to run around the forest right now. Uh, but hiking uh, off trail with a backpack, heavy backpack and stuff is uh, is really good exercise anyway. And number three is radio communication. Now, how do you combine radio communication with off trail hiking and land navigation? Well, that is the challenge for this episode. As an amateur radio operator, portable operation is quite common. However, it would be way too easy to uh, just hike around, set up the radio in different spots and make a few contacts with other hams around the world, QSOs as we call them. Instead, uh, there will be another radio operator at the other end who will send me to different reference points on a map that I will have to reach within a, a deadline and uh, get another coordinate to go to. I will not focus on ham radio in this episode, but on license free radio that can be freely used by anyone. Today I will be operating in a part of the uh, frequency spectrum called HF high frequency, which spans between 3 and 30 megahertz. You may have heard of VHF and UHF. UHF is ultra high frequency which is where most uh, walkie-talkies and even your cell phone operate in. As a ham uh, radio operator and as a military radio operator, I love HF. And the reason is that uh, the frequency span is uh, just right to be able to use the atmosphere to uh, reflect or refract back your transmission to Earth. So in, in essence, uh, uh, your transmission radiates from your uh, aerial, from your antenna in all kinds of uh, different directions all around the antenna and some of that uh, radiation goes into the atmosphere in what's called the ionosphere and in essence it, it uh, bounces off the ionosphere and goes back to earth allowing for very long range communication without some kind of repeating station in between. This is called skywave propagation. But HF is also suitable for just beyond line of sight communication in terrain and will usually reach further than VHF and UHF, especially in hilly and heavily forested terrain. That is the reason I'm discussing HF today. Unfortunately, there is only one license free alternative within the HF band in most countries, and that is CB radio. CB radio operates in the higher part of HF, which is actually very good for longer range communication in hilly forest. Frequency is around 27 megahertz, uh, which is also commonly called the 11 meter band, as one wavelength is uh, around 11 meters long. A fully sized dipole antenna for CB radio is slightly longer than 5 meters. So it's not like the small UHF antenna in your cell phone which a full sized dipole would be basically that length. So it's a huge difference in antenna size. CB radio is or was traditionally used in vehicles uh, allowing for their long antennas. Today in Sweden, CB radio, there's very little activity in CB radio, uh, but in Europe there's a lot of high power, not very legal, 
activity in this band uh, since they use way more than the legal power limit interference from these stations through skyway propagation is more significant than if uh, they would have used the legal power uh, but if you use CB for non-critical long-range communication it's still uh, usable since skyway propagation in this part of the band only happens during daylight especially in summer so if you need to use CB radio for long-range communication nighttime would be the best time for traffic essentially you would use some other license free option uh, during the day uh, only communicating within your group and wait to send your critical long-range communication at nighttime instead in military comms uh, the soldier may have an internal group radio uh, talking to his or her uh, group uh, usually in the high end of UHF or even SHF super high frequency uh, the platoon uh, would have an operator typically with a VHF uh, radio to communicate with uh, company staff uh, the company radio operator would have at least two systems uh, one to communicate down to the platoons and uh, want to communicate uh, up to battalion and that radio may be an HF rig uh, depending on distance and terrain so usually HF is used for long range comms and UHF is used for shorter ranges uh, there is not a single band or single radio that uh, can be used for all scenarios uh, there are several license free UHF alternatives but most countries have uh, limited or no license free alternatives for VHF. As a prepper I believe it is a very good investment to own a couple of CB radios and play around with them. Uh, they are fairly inexpensive and use external antennas. Most other license free uh, radios out there like PMR or, and or FRS uh, don't allow you to change uh, antennas. Uh, and CB radio allows you to play around with HF and even uh, test or build your own antennas. Also most uh, CB radios can be modified to increase transmitted power and transmit outside of the legal band plan. Uh, I won't tell you not to do it uh, but I urge you to learn and experiment with an unmodified rig and the legal power limit and save the mods for the apocalypse when you may need them. If you want to take it further, get the ham radio license and you have a lot more options than high power CB uh, can offer. Let me introduce you to the radio operator in the other end. Sierra Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha. Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha. Radio check, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Lima Charlie, out. Gertrude is a virtual radio operator. Uh, it's a computer program with speech recognition connected to a radio interface, which in turn is uh, connected to a transceiver. Gertrude also features a simple cryptographic system called KAKA, uh, which stands for Kilo Alpha Cipher and Authentication. Maybe the name is a bit uh, exaggerated. Uh, it's not that bad, but not unbreakable either. It's vulnerable to frequency analysis. The cool thing about Gertrude is that I can use telephony to uh, communicate with a computer. Normally you need to send uh, a data message through some kind of device or a computer as written text. Uh, and you know, you, you type SMSs on a cell phone in order to send data messages. Uh, most readily available transceivers uh, today use voice as a primary mode. For this episode I have programmed Gertrude to send me to random reference points on a map. When I arrive to the reference point I am to report my position and uh, Gertrude will send me a new reference point to go to. Uh, as Gertrude knows the coordinates, Gertrude also knows the distance which I've used to set uh, deadlines. So it's a different kind of orienteering game, I, I guess. In order to avoid CB interference, uh, for this video I have relocated to the 10 meter amateur radio band. 
CB radio was 11 meters and uh, close to it we have the 10 meter band uh, that we as hams, as radio amateur radio operators can, can use. CB was around 27 megahertz and uh, now I'm instead operating on uh, 29.265 megahertz. This little mobile transceiver, a CRT Millennium, uh, has been modified making it possible to use the 10 meter band. As a ham radio operator uh, I am allowed to modify uh, a transceiver and use it on the amateur radio bands. First I will call and send an encrypted message telling Gertrude where I am right now. And right now I am at uh, reference point Victor Alpha. Uh, I will have to use the Kaka uh, cipher and construct my message. After a while, Gertrude will uh, instruct me to go to another reference point. So, in the near future, I will release the source code for Gertrude and uh, the Kakao cipher. Uh, both are written in Python, uh, but for now they are just prototypes. Sierra Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha. Gertrude, Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha. Message, Lima, Yankee, Whiskey, Quebec, Yankee, Sierra. Tango Alpha, Whiskey Sierra, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Copy. Message follows. Stand by. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Message. Sierra. Sierra. India. Alpha. Romeo. Yankee. India. Alpha. Kilo. Yankee. Juliet. November. Echo. Bravo. Quebec. Quebec. India. X-ray. Kilo. Bravo. November. Fox Street. I say again. Sierra. Sierra. India. Alpha. Romeo. Yankee. India. Alpha. Kilo. Yankee. Juliet. November. Echo. Bravo. Quebec. Quebec. India. X-ray. Kilo, Bravo, November, Fox Street, out. Gertrude just sent me an encrypted message and now I have to decrypt it using the, uh, the, the Kaka cipher. So in this case uh, the time frame here is uh, uh, yeah, it's almost 9 o'clock and this sheet here is for uh, from 800 hours to uh, 1559 uh, and uh, yeah we're going to use uh, box uh, Sierra Sierra then uh, we just have to uh, yeah this will take a while to uh, decrypt it's a it's a manual you know a hand cipher nothing complicated you can do it when you're drunk or <laughs> exhausted physically so it's a uh, it's a very, I mean, it's a simple cipher. So first is India Alpha, that's India and that's Alpha. That's a G. Uh, and then we have Romeo Yankee. Romeo Yankee, that's a 2. So uh, G2 is, uh, is a command uh, that Gertrude sent me, which is uh, go to. So the next, uh, the next, uh, part of the message will be a reference point and a deadline. Uh, Gertrude wants to send me to reference point Golf Alpha and uh, the next part of this message will be uh, a timestamp. So Juliet November 0 Echo Bravo So Echo Bravo here is a change and that instructs uh, me that I have to change the group 
so uh, uh, Echo Bravo and the following, the next group will be Quebec, Quebec and I have to go to Quebec, Quebec up here and then continue with India X-Ray here India X-Ray is a 9 so 900 hours uh, some time uh, Kilo Bravo uh, 3 uh, November Foxtrot November 8 Gertrude wants me at reference point Golf Alpha no later than 0938 hours so let's pack up and, uh, and head out So this is uh, the antenna I'm using. It's a very simple type of antenna. It's a vertical dipole, uh, or actually it's a vertical resonant feed line dipole. I will not go into antenna uh, theory or antenna design right now. It's, uh, I mean, it's a science by itself. Uh, but uh, a dipole has essentially two uh, legs, two parts of the antenna. Uh, one part is the radiating element and the other part is the counterpoise, so to speak. They are of equal length. The, the typical type of antenna you would use is a quarter of a wavelength. So I'm using the 10 meter band here. A quarter of that wavelength is two and a half meters, approximately. Uh, it obviously depends on the frequency, so you take 300 and divide it by the frequency in megahertz and then you get the the uh, the wavelength and you divide that by 4 and you get uh, the part of uh, the radiating part of the the antenna uh, that you usually use so this is a quarter wavelength and it goes until here uh, so this is the radiating element then this is a sleeve dipole, so you have uh, this. Uh, this here is just a normal, uh, uh, what's it called, copper wire. It's insulated, so it's black insulation. And then here, it's uh, soldered and uh, and yeah, heat shrink, tubed, glued uh, together with the the inner part of an RG58 RF uh, 50 ohm RF cable. There's a shield on, on, on this cable, and the shield goes above the, uh, the inner, the lead of the, uh, the RG58 cable. So it breaks here, and here starts the shield. And in this case, why it's called a resonant feed line dipole is because the, the outer part of the feed line, the shield, is uh, radiating, it's part of the antenna system. This is the counterpoise part. It's also two and a half meters. Then it ends up in this coil. Now this is the... There are many opinions about these coils. But for this frequency, uh, for CB radio frequency, 27 megahertz, and for 10 meter band, uh, this type of air coil on a uh, form... Yeah, it's a, it's a 110 millimeter uh, sewage pipe. The RG58 cable goes five turns around this form. This prevents the RF from traveling further and it actually terminates the antenna right here. Uh, well, sort of anyway. It works very well uh, actually. Even if it's not a resistive uh, load, it's a, uh, it adds some inductance to the system. It's obviously an air coil. So, but for this frequency, these coils work quite well for this type of antenna. I would not uh, advise you to use this type of uh, coils or this type of antenna, resonant field line dipole for, for VHF or UHF. Uh, it will probably not work very well. And here you have the transmission line and it's the same RG58 cable so it just continues into a, a PL259 uh, connector and that is what you connect to an SO239 connector which is on your on the back of your CB radio or ham rig or whatever you have. 
So that's it. Uh, now I have to hurry up if I want to go get to Golf Alpha. So yeah. By the way, uh, this is how you coil stuff. Yeah, this line I also have some kind of weight here and throw it up a tree. You dangle it. Yeah, will you see me do it? Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, a way to coil your stuff. Maybe I should have taken the, the paracord off this. And now it's obviously an antenna that I'm going to. So in this way you don't get any kinks in it, and of course when you roll it out you have to uh, you have to roll it out like I did in the beginning. So then you have a nice coil like that, no kinks, uh, ready to go. So that's it. okay, so I'm ready to head out. Uh, before we continue. Uh, you probably saw me wearing this radio before. This is also a CB radio, but it's a hand transceiver. Uh, what's good about this is that it's actually water resistant, so it, it will take, it will handle rain pretty well. And you can see that this antenna is not five meters long. It's way shorter. Uh, and the reason is that it's got a coil here in the middle. Uh, and that coil shortens the, the physical length of the antenna. So electrically it is uh, it behaves like a quarter wavelength antenna. But since it's shorter and uh, it adds this coil here, uh, the performance of this antenna is uh, nowhere near the full length antenna. And so you have to be aware of that. But this allows me to, you know, you can walk around with it. And uh, this uh, type of CB radio, uh, the antenna you saw earlier that I demonstrated, the wire antenna. I have one up in a tree at our house, at our country house where I am right now. And uh, uh, that is our communication for the, this area. The cell phone reception here is extremely spotty. So even if we are in, you know, one of the world's best countries uh, for cell phone coverage, uh, right here it's actually not that great. So we don't have any uh, cell phone coverage around our house, actually. And then we use uh, we use radios to communicate. And even though this antenna is short, uh, the terrain here is perfect for for CB radio frequency, uh, 27 megahertz. So that way I can communicate with my wife in the house when I'm out here, and uh, we don't need to rely on the spotty cell phone coverage that we have here. And anyway, uh, you can't call using your cell phone from the house. But let's head out to Golf Alpha. So I'm somewhere near uh, Golf Alpha at the moment, and uh, yeah, I will use uh, this tree to get my antenna up there. Uh, if you wonder what this is, it's, uh, it's hunting uh, season right now. Uh, well, maybe not actually yet, but uh, um, I heard there were dogs out, so they are hunting boar right now, I think.
also have to construct the message. And the command that I was sent to Gertrude is AT and my uh, reference uh, point. Uh, AT is a command for, you know, at and uh, the reference point. Let's take this group. CR Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha, Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha, radio check, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude, good, readable, out. Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha, message, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Send your message. Over. Sierra Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha. Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha. Message. Mike, Kilo, Uniform, Yankee, Sulu, November. Mike, Quebec, Uniform, X-Ray. Acknowledge. Over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Copy. Authentication. Quebec. Foxtrot. Alpha. Whiskey. I say again. Quebec. Foxtrot. Alpha. Whiskey. Message follows. Stand by. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Proceed to reference point. Victor. Romeo. Not later than 10, 100, 19 hours. I say again. Proceed to reference point. Victor. Romeo. Not later than 10, 100, 19 hours. Out. Okay, so uh, Gertrude wants me at reference point Victor Romeo, not later than. 1019 hours. Uh, so that was a message in clear. It was unencrypted, so it was just uh, easily copied. Uh, no need to decrypt anything. And obviously, no one knows where reference point Victor Romeo is except the one who has the map. Yeah, you may wonder what the Morse code is in the beginning of Gertrude's transmission. And that is my call sign, Sierra Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha. Uh, since I'm on the 10 meter amateur radio band, I have to identify my transmission. Uh, so one way to do that with machines is to have a preamble with, uh, with CW, which is Morse code. So uh, that's also why I'm starting my transmission with Sierra Alpha 6 Mike Whiskey Alpha. Because Gertrude is more set up as a military sort of comms uh, thing. Uh, and uses, uh, you know, more, uh, more uh, uh, traditional military call signs or at least here, except that Gertrude is called Gertrude. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's what I'm doing on the handbands. And uh, for CB radio, you don't have to use any call signs. You can just freely transmit and say whoever you are. You can say that you're Donald Duck and uh, whatever. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, and uh, by the way, <laughs> Donald Duck is uh, Kalle Anka in Swedish. and. Uh, the cipher is called Kilo Alpha, so Kalanka becomes Kilo Alpha. Uh, so it's more like a, a not very serious type of encryption. But yeah, it, it serves the purpose and uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, Gertrude can copy it quite fine, I think. Uh, that's uh, nice to hear, even though we are several kilometers from, from uh, Gertrude's transceiver right now. So yeah, Victor Romeo it is. 
So Victor Romeo is uh, back from where I came and it's about 500 meters so not that difficult. Uh, time to move. Sierra Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha. Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha. Message, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Send your message, over. Gertrude, Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha. Message, Lima, Yankee, Whiskey, Quebec, Yankee, Sierra. Tango, Hotel, Whiskey, November, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude, copy. Message follows, stand by. Okay, so now uh, Gertrude will send me an encrypted message. I have to copy this one. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Message. Juliet. Lima. Romeo. India. Whiskey. Yankee. Quebec. Bravo. Lima. Romeo. Lima. Whiskey. Charlie. India. Quebec. Quebec. Bravo. Mike. Oscar. Bravo. November. Fox Street. I say again. Juliet. Lima. Romeo. India. Whiskey. Yankee. Quebec. Bravo. Lima. Romeo. Lima. Whiskey. Charlie. India. Quebec. Quebec. Bravo. Mike. Oscar, Bravo, November, Fox Street, out. So, basically half an hour we have to be at Victor Uniform. So my next next reference point is Victor Uniform. And uh, uh, let's see, oh, I'm heading heading back to where I came from again. So, yeah. Okie dokie, I'm uh, Oscar Mike. So somewhere out there is uh, Victor Uniform and uh, I will set up my uh, antenna here in, 
cover of the forest. This will be the final call. Uh, since I have another deadline, I, uh, I'm about to break too. I promised my wife that we'd be leaving or we'll start packing no later than 1100 hours. I will break that deadline too. It's really difficult making these videos. I thought I would be a lot faster. And the distances on this, uh, this radio game, they, they, they are not very large. I mean, one kilometer in terrain, it, it obviously takes a while, even if you're not filming. Uh, so yeah, and setting up these aerials is, uh, is more difficult than, than just using a hand receiver like this one. Sierra Alpha 6, Mike Whiskey Alpha. Gertrude, this is Mike Whiskey Alpha. Message, Quebec, Quebec. Tango X-Ray, Foxtrot Sierra. India, Sierra. Kilo, Tango, over. Mike Whiskey Alpha, Mike Whiskey Alpha. This is Gertrude, copy. Message follows, stand by. Mike Whiskey Alpha, this is Gertrude. Message. Mike. Kilo. Mike. Foxtrot. Ulu. India. Bravo. Whiskey. Alpha. Oscar. Tango. November. Tango. Quebec. Uniform. Whiskey. November. November. Quebec. Foxtrot, Alpha, Lima, I say again, Mike, Kilo, Mike, Foxtrot, Zulu, India, Bravo, Whiskey, Alpha, Oscar, Tango, November, Tango, Quebec, Uniform, Whiskey, November, November, Quebec, Foxtrot, Alpha, Lima, out. So that means I, uh, I have to decrypt this for continuing. Gertrude wants to send me to uh, reference point Romeo Victor. Uh, but yeah, I think I will call it a day and I want to have lunch. I brought the US MREs just because I got this in as a birthday present from my wife. I wanted the real thing, I, I said, uh, and uh, you know she could find any any MRE from any army around the world. She got a box of uh, the A box of uh, US MREs, and um, actually I didn't know that it's a US government property. Commercial resale is unlawful. Hopefully these are not uh, uh, stolen anywhere, but they, they came directly from eBay. According to the design and, and the date stamp and everything, these are from 2017. So menu number one, chili with beans. I would say that it's, it's a different kind of taste than we are used to. We have a type of MRE bag in, in the uh, service here too. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a different setup. It's a 24 hour bag instead. I will probably do a video on that in the future. Peel is not my thing. So the flame is into that. Uh, what's this? This is some kind of cornbread. Uh, and chili with beets. What do we have here? Pepperoni pizza crackers and the sleeve. And we have uh, uh, matches and um, I don't know if I had matches in the other one. Uh, spoon, I think, yeah, we can use this one. Um, vegetable crackers. Yeah, 
you need water for this and uh, I'll show you the water. The ones we have in Swedish are from uh, this Danish brand, Orifo, and they are a little bit larger than this one. And but they they also you're supposed to put the uh, the thing you want to heat inside uh, the bag before pouring water in. And I think you should do the same thing with this one. Yeah, yeah, you should. So it's a bit tight. I guess that's why they have this sleeve. But they want to heat something else. No, it's not that. Nothing more than I want to heat something else. Put water in that one. More water than I should have put in there. Maybe I should have put the, the bag in the uh, like that, I guess. So, what do we have more here? We have uh, more beverage and cheese bread. actually not bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No good. And these uh, small pepperoni pizza crackers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Hi, nice what? So uh, well uh, the batteries uh, on the cameras are running out so uh, yeah with this uh, with this meal here I'm uh, signing off and I hope you enjoyed this episode uh, and leave questions in the comment field below if you want me to do anything else especially radio comms and maybe go into more detail about anything that I've uh, demonstrated here today well uh, that's it for this episode, and uh, this is Mike, out.